Welcome back to day three of making a, an overblow beast for uh, Leonid. And I'm gonna continue to work on the third uh, the third hole, the pair of reeds that has uh, three bands and I want all of those bands to be perfectly accessible. I've just finished uh, advanced embossing on the blow side so now I'm gonna continue on the draw side Now while embossing you might want to use something, uh, I've seen people use uh, an old scanner uh, and on, on that scanner uh, they put some sort of uh, hardened glass or acrylic glass and something hard, I mean not just not to mm, make a hole <laughs> in, uh, in the glass of of, of that scanner and the light that comes from underneath allows you to see uh, in real time the slot tolerances as you emboss them and other people use uh, an elect electronic microscope I know for sure that Boris Plotnikov does this maybe I should use it as well but I haven't felt the need for it yet. I mean if I invest in a microscope which is not that expensive anymore, I can buy USB micro microscopes for a couple of bucks. I should also in invent some sort of tools you know that uh, would allow me uh, a completely new level of precision because I will see <laughs> how clumsy I am while doing all of this That, that's a much better lighting. I don't believe that my videos are gonna leave customized it without work because obviously as you see I've spent two hours and I've gone through two reads so far and there have been and will be a demand for people who are able to do this work who have the time, you know, and nerve to actually sit and do all of this boring stuff for money which is not too much Usually customizers charge about uh, 140 euros or the highest top of the line custom harmonicas go for 300 bucks which is I think not too much even even though you pay like for a uh, well think of it uh, you pay 300 dollars for a cheap Chinese guitar which is total crap and it was not um, hand tweaked like custom harmonicas are and what you do is you pay for work you pay for all those boring hours spent on an instrument and you pay for qualification of those people who do it like for example if you some people can uh, have technique but they don't have uh, <laughs> the hands <laughs> some people have the hands but don't have the technique and to do this you have to have both 
Uh, I'll mention it again when we come up to overblow parts because you have to really have the technique to overblow to see if what you're doing is any good at all and to see the possibilities otherwise you're walking blind without any sign of direction I'm gonna repeat it again what I'm doing right now is I'm just curious how good it will get if I do super embossing both on blow and draw reads where it's um, really not, not necessary. I mean, I usually do that sort of thing for uh, uh, overblow reads only, but in that case, I was actually quite curious because the reads responded quite well in the first place, and I thought that maybe. I'm gonna get some outstanding results if I go this way. So it's pure sport. <laughs> By the way, I'm again amazed that some people have watched the video uh, up to the end. <laughs> How many true geeks we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe I should tell you a joke. <laughs> uh, do you know this one about uh, the old and the young bluesman? Let's say about a young bluesman and Sonny Boy Williamson. Uh, two blokes uh, play at a street corner. At one corner there is a, an old fat blues man and on the other you know a skinny young guy playing at, uh, and the, mm, the old one plays one sad note and sustains and you know and wails and it doesn't play really something exotic and the young one goes through all of the all of the chromatic notes you, notes you know at high speed and stuff like that there is a crowd of people near the old one and no one is listening to the young one <laughs> and eventually the young one gets tired of this walk, walks up to the old blues man and asks hey how come daddy uh, all of the people are staring at you and listening to you and there's no one who wants to listen to my music? He says. The the old one says, "You're young. You're still searching for the right note, and I have found mine." And sometimes when I listen to Sonny Boy Williamson too, I really think about this that he found his note. Like there are moments when he just goes on wow wow on one note, and all of them speak. And I think that's the ultimate goal. Like to play nothing and to play everything at the same time. I think I should check something. <laughs> now, now some passing bands are still a bit airy. So I should get rid of this and this will surely help.
Okay, let's go for some simple embossing. You know, some of you may think that this harp is perfectly fine. I don't know what the hell he wants from it. Well, for some it's fine, but not for someone who wants a professional grade response. Like each note that's uh, perfectly usable. Not just notes that you can get from the harmonica. I want notes that will play, that you can wail on. <laughs> Bingo! blow here but this says nothing about the work because it's still not what I need I will not apply any wax or any, I mean, beeswax, or I will not apply any nail polish to the rivets. All I will do is I'm gonna emboss it real well, and this thing will sing. Now this embossing looks good, except for a couple of places here. great now. <laughs> uh, if I played Richter harmonicas I would certainly have an inclination to leave this one for me. <laughs> Leonid, you're a lucky guy, you're gonna have a great A harmonica. Though I'm fairly certain that at the point when I check assembled harmonica, I will have to adjust this thing further. I mean, when you when you put on screws and cover plates, one interesting thing happens when you check it disassembled and then assemble this thing. All of these screws will apply pressure on the reed plate. And so the curvature of the reed plate will slightly change. And this will affect uh, the playability of bends and over bends.
as you see, we have an overblow on hole 4. And most of you who probably have never tried the custom harmonica will think, hell, what the hell I, I am supposed to do with it? I mean, uh, why would I go beyond that if there is also already an overblow? See, when I try to go further up, it begins to... Um, what the word? Lose grip. <laughs> I mean, you can go a little bit up, but then it just won't sound. So I think that's enough for hole 3 and I'll go to hole 4 and do some simple bassing on, on the blow side and on the draw side as well maybe someday we'll get lazy and just apply nail polish <laughs> But for now, I'm doing it the same way as I would do for myself. I've also stopped making uh, overblow setup on brass reeds as well simply because I want my work this long and boring work to last more than five years and regular brass reeds will not sustain anymore after five years it will be a pile of trash and I certainly don't want that to happen to my instrument. I want the tuning to last, I want the reeds to last, and then most importantly I want the setup to last. That's a pity that I have um, sold my first 1847 because uh, you know, if you look inside a harmonica that was heavily used for a year, you wouldn't believe how good it looks. Those shiny reed plates are new, but the, the used ones don't look too scary as uh, brass reed plates look after a year of use. I mean, they would look something like this. <laughs> With broken reeds, rusty rivets. Awful. And because I'm doing custom work, there is really no difference if it's a 20 bucks brass reed harmonica or this one which will cost you 60 or maybe maybe 70 okay the initial price is not so much important because the most the most money will go into hours spent on it so it would feel cheating you if I took something cheap trying to make an instrument from it. I'm trying to center it. Okay, 
here goes the drawer is played. I think I should repeat what I already told you last time. Check as often as you can, because if you lose the the point where uh, you start open bossing, you'll have to deal with uh, all the excess of the all of the metal that you leave after too much embossing. It's just more. It's just easier to do it right from the start. set up an overblow so I should do some some embossing near the red on the on the blow side what I'm aiming at is to have an overblow that's perfectly sustainable and that's bendable at least a couple of semitones up Quite yet there. Not quite. You should also keep in mind that uh, when you uh, mm, check an overblow with the cover plates off, your lips close off some of the slot so you don't get uh, the real picture when the reed plates will be on. But this fun part. is not we're not at this stage yet that's the biggest challenge to make a harmonica that will be um, to assembly friendly friendly as I would call so say if I make a, an instrument for a complete edit uh, it should survive some cleaning, some taking it apart. It should play exactly the same way. And that's a hard task. Because some things depends on uh, depend on how, how tight the screws are fastened and so on. And this is something I can't control. I don't know uh, how it will be uh, played, treated. I don't even know what will happen when I uh, send it. You know, in some countries parcels are treated very differently. Like stepped on, 
being thrown it's all very important when you have such small tolerances and low gaps You must be pretty curious, so I am. Nothing has changed drastically. I'm gonna also make uh, high resolution pictures like macro shots and close ups of the final result and I will post it on online on the forum. A semi second semitone is coming and I feel that the overblow uh, is much more compressed now I mean the air pressure it's much more closer it's much closer to um, a normal note The battery of the camera died, so I had to recharge it, and I'm continuing to emboss the four drawer to make a sustainable, stable overblow. For those of you who are not familiar with the overblow physics, uh, it may be wise to, you know, make an introduction to this. So during a normal blow note, a normal blow note, uh, the blow read sounds. And during a draw note, a draw note, and during a band, say a four draw band, both read sounds at the same time, and the overblow is, um, and the overblow is happening when we blow, but the draw read sounds, or vice versa, if we draw, but the blow read is the one that sounds. So for a stable overblow we need to um, make sure that we have uh, enough uh, air pressure and gapping to stop the normal read from sounding. And then we have uh, 
the second read which is supposed to sound and um, it should be um, fast enough to respond quickly as the normal read will stop sounding and then there shouldn't be any space uh, uh, near the river where the air would ex ex escape you know for the sound to begin immediately by the way the whole step on three draw for example uh, that's what you call the full bend it's a bit out of tune you know a bit too flat it's uh, the same uh, as an overblow because if you if you try to play uh, three three draw lowest bend and stop the reed from sounding with the finger the, the draw reed you'll still get a note which means it's a it's an overblow overdraw so to say okay I'm gonna emboss uh, the four draw because I believe that this will increase the response of the draw read when it's uh, supposed to sound during a no blow so we'll have a faster overblow and thus uh, more stable more controllable overblow the snow is gone here in Varna by the way Feels like spring. Springtime is come. Frankly speaking, I have absolutely no idea how much time I'm gonna need for the whole thing because I never tried to calculate how much work I put in an instrument. So theoretically, this is gonna be like 15 hours or so. It's like, uh, you know, this is the third hour and I'm all only setting up the third read, so probably one hour per read. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of time. Some of you guys have asked uh, questions regarding the videos. Uh, I've got an email from one guy asking uh, what's wrong because he's making uh, embossing on a read on the three draw and blow pair but the result uh, gets you know more dull dull sounding that really depends on how you do it and that depends on uh, centering so during embossing uh, you usually can't emboss a read equally from both sides so one side gets embossed quicker so you'll have to center the read because sometimes you know it begins to buzz when the read is out of center and sometimes it just gets dull so uh, I encourage you to check uh, gain some sort of light uh, if the read is uh, uh, if there is something in the way or if the read is too close to the slot and that may give you an idea what direction to move also sometimes uh, sometimes reads are just uh, you know un unresponsive some profiles may be done incorrectly but you know that's this theoretically it only happens maybe once per 20 harmonicas or so and in general embossing fixes it and 
Another question I have received a couple of times is if I work for Zydel. No, I don't. In fact, uh, I only appreciate the work they do and their philosophy all about harmonicas. You know, this is one com company that pushes innovation. And they, they don't really look at what other people, other companies are doing. They are making their own thing. And I appreciate this and that's why I'm trying to promote them. So to say, but not, that, that's not because they, they don't pay me for this. It's just because I like the products. And regarding our relations, let's say they're my friends. They do some stuff for me, like making those true chromatic harmonicas for me. And um, they're good. They're good at which, what they do, you know. And I'm also trying to help them in some ways. So that's that's uh, the only company that I know who, which will be you know uh, speaking to me immortals like me or like you. So if you uh, shoot a mail uh, in the mailbox, I'm pretty sure that you'll get a very thorough response, and that will be a response from response from. I wouldn't be surprised if the president will write you, you know, in some cases. I, I, I really can't believe that, I mean, Suzuki or <laughs> Leo Oscar would do the same thing. When those uh, videos are over, I mean, making them Blah 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 beast, fully I need. I think I will make another series of uh, videos in the same block uh, about making them uh, half valved uh, true chromatic. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's still lots of stuff to show you. For example, uh, I'm gonna make a true chromatic out of uh, regular Richter and to do that I'm gonna need to replace reads retune and then have valve it so in one video I'm gonna show lots of interesting stuff and lots of useful stuff by the way how to change reads, how to retune how to uh, emboss brass and so on because it will be a Solis Pro, which is a uh, brass. Also, sometimes I get emails from you guys, and um, I can claim that uh, I answer a hundred percent of emails. So. Each email you shoot at me will get a response. Sometimes you respond to emails but get nothing in return. So I wonder if my replies really reach you. You know, so so that you know that I always reply to emails. So if you don't get a reply, then maybe maybe it get lost somewhere. You can also write me on Skype. Uh, I have my Skype listed uh, in my profile on the forum www.hobbyclub.com. I'm very proud to say that uh, I have a couple of um, very important people who registered at the forum. We have Ben Bauman, a customizer from Netherlands. Uh, we have uh, Bertrand Becher, he's a representative of the Zydel company. Uh, we also have um, 
Boris Plotnikov, who is, in my opinion, one of the best players in Russia. And he's a customizer as well. Uh, Alex Packling, who else? Uh, Brendan Power. Uh, Ron from uh, Simply Unique Customs. He makes awesome mix. Uh, awesome mics, awesome microphones. And also, maybe people who I forgot, but encourage you to check it out. They're not very active at the moment, but their activity will depend on general form activity. So if people start to write, post and discuss things, maybe all of them will join in as well. Remember I told you that I thought that the overblow is stable enough? Well, I think I was mistaken because I don't like it now. So <laughs> I'm gonna continue to work on the blow read. The ultimate goal in um, setting up an overblow is to have it respond like, like a normal node. I mean you certainly know what a leaky harmonica means so I don't want any leaky overbends in the harmonica I want them to feel like normal bends and normal notes that's the ultimate thing you know, the ideal and you can get some of the notes quite close to this idea some are more tricky, some are easier for example, overblow on hole 1 is quite tricky, while overblow on hole 6 is usually, almost in all cases, perfect. I mean, on my harmonicas. Hole 4 is quite tricky as well, because you can get a normal overblow, but it's difficult to make it bendable more than one semitone. And you really need to go that far because this means, you know, if the overblow is bendable and if it bends over one semitone up, then you naturally have more room. So if you miss the overblow, uh, it will not begin to screech. Uh, what else, you know? I, I think I'd better show, it, show this. Well, that's one thing I prefer over an overblow that begins to screech at the top. So right now it only goes up to maybe one, one and a half semitones. And then uh, you have no note and no sounds, which is much better than uh, some awful... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe those sounds, you probably have heard them. If you try to bend the overblow up, and then you lose it. And everybody knows it, notices, by the way, that you lose it. <laughs> you sound like a loser in that case. Which is not cool at all. <laughs> If you ever come to Bulgaria, by the way, let me know. You might meet and jam, you know, would be fun. That's a interesting place.
at this point I see all those holes in my embossing uh, for example right now here it's fine but somewhere in the middle I see a hole so this goes like you know closer and then we have a hole and then close so I have to close it because sometimes such a tiny hole is enough for air to escape Uh, I think that when you bend an over blow, the reed starts to swing slower or with less amplitude. That's the only uh, explanation that I have for you know overblows not being bendable indefinitely. So the pressure on the reed is less. And eventually, let's say during normal overblow, it's like this, and then you bend it up and it vibrates somewhere here and then somewhere here, and then it's lost because gap is too low. So, gap is, yeah, too big. But uh, you know, no one has ever researched this. It's very really hard to do research on instrument that's inside your mouth. It's even very hard to explain the technique. Not to not to talk about technology. Uh, I must also th say um, one very important thing. As I'm doing this, uh, this uh, overblow beast, there's no guarantee that uh, I don't encounter some stupid problem in the middle or in the end of it. So I really don't know if this harmonica will be perfect. Because up to the point there's no real technology that allows to check those things and to predict those things. And I'll tell you that even Chris Michalik, who is, you know, <laughs> a guru at modernbluesharmonica.com, was a guru. Rest in peace, Chris. Uh, well, there was a story about a friend of mine who ordered an instrument from him. And he told me, he told him that his instrument was delayed because it turned out to be so great that he, you know, used it and sold it to someone else and then he made something else for him which means that he had no idea if the instrument would be good or not which means in turn he was doing some sort of same shaman thing and in my opinion the only difference between different custom harmonicas is the time spent on it so if you spend two hours, don't be fooled. You'll never get anything decent in a matter of two hours. It will play fine, but then after a week or so, you'll notice that it needs further gapping, further embossing, and so on. Sometimes it gets really, really boring to do this. Sometimes I hate doing this. <laughs> to 
tell the same, to tell the truth. Especially, uh, I don't like to make harmonicas for new customers because I'm not really sure if they have the technique. And because if you don't have the technique, if you if you're playing and if your skills are not sophisticated enough you'll not be the person who can judge if this is a good harmonica or not because it just needs you know custom harmonicas need uh, to adapt your technique I was lucky enough to begin tweaking harmonicas from maybe from the second year of my learning so I got used to low gaps, smaller tolerances quite early and I don't feel any discomfort on uh, extremely embossed or extremely gapped harmonicas. I play with real low gaps for example and if you're playing for 30 years or so and stock harmonicas maybe you don't you don't need to expect this harmonica to be you know, super playable for you because your breathing is adapted for uh, less responsive instruments so you need to invest some time and learn how to play light By the way, this is the stock comb for 1847s and for the Zolis Pro, uh, by the way, as well. And I believe that this is the best serial produced comb ever. Uh, it's completely flat and it's very smooth on the, on the lips. It was laser cut and sealed. And as far as I know, Zyla has checked those combs in a dishwasher. <laughs> and they play fine. But some people, like Leonid, want the most sophisticated thing inside. <laughs> so this was done from a very hard wood called Ebony. It's uh, black, looks like, you know, coal, coal black. And when assembled, it actually looks like, like the Noble, which has a black anodized aluminum comb. And it was hand polished. Uh, some combs even reflect in the surface. So... Leon is gonna ha get a hell of a harmonica, I must say. Something unique. Mm -hmm. I get those comps from Moscow. You hear that? As I increase pressure, uh, the pitch goes up. Why? Uh, because I have over embossed somewhere near the rivet uh, 